My name is Jonathan Goforth, and I've been a full-time realtor for 23 years, a long time. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of houses, and this video is an example of how to flip a house. And it's, a, it's something that happened to me with one of my clients earlier this year, just a few months ago. It's something that I want to share with you so you understand how to do it right and how not to do it wrong. That's what we're going to talk about now. There are two other videos below at the bottom of the remarks that you should click on to also watch. So check this one out. And if you like this video, please click subscribe. I'm new at this uh, YouTube thing. I've only been making YouTube videos for about three or four weeks. So <laughs> I don't have hardly any subscribers yet. I'll be happy when I get up to 40 subscribers. <laughs> so please click subscribe and uh, hopefully I start making some more videos. When it comes to flipping houses, there are two secrets. A lot of investors this is where they mess up. And so I'm gonna tell you a story of what happened. The two big things you've got to do a good job at when you're buying a house to flip it. You've got to have a budget. What are your expenses gonna be? Expenses to fix it up, expenses with your loan, and then expenses to sell it again. Because if you're gonna sell it again, you're probably gonna list it with a realtor. You're gonna have commission, closing costs, you might have to pay some of the, the new buyer's closing costs because that's common. Figure all that in to a good budget so you know what's about to happen. Then you've got to know what the comps are. You can get this from your real estate agent. They can help you with this. They're not gonna help you with the budget. That's, that's your responsibility to price it depending on what you wanna do. That's what makes you the expert at flipping houses. But the comps you get from your real estate agent, you need to know what everything is selling for in that neighborhood, in that city, um, how long are they taking to sell, and look at the types of loans that those buyers are getting. You're probably gonna see a lot of FHA buyers. So two things you need to know when it comes to, uh, when it comes to you flipping it and selling it again, if there's a chance you're gonna have an FHA buyer, you cannot have that buyer go under contract on your house within the first 45 days that you own it. So you buy the house, you close on it, now you're fixing it up really fast because you wanna get it back on the market and, and flip it quickly. Don't offer it, don't let your agent offer it to an FHA buyer if you're doing this in less than 45 days because you can't even sign a contract for an FHA buyer. Now, if you sell this house in less than 180 days, you're gonna, the, the buyer is gonna need to do two appraisals. So you need to know that as you flip. This is why you need to know the comps. So let me tell you the story of what happened earlier this year. I've actually had this happen with three different buyers on the houses I am selling again for them. So I'm listing them after they buy them and fix them up. I'm going to relist it and we're going to flip it. Here's the dilemma. Some of the investors are either overpaying when they buy it and there's not enough budget to fix it up and sell it again based on what the sales are in the area. And they're either losing money or barely breaking even. Like, one guy, two months ago, he his total profit was $1,000. Well, he did all the work, so that's the only money he made. He should not have done it. It was a huge waste of time. He would have been ahead to wait for a better house to buy. Here's what happened on this, on this deal. This buyer, I did not sell it to him, and I didn't even know, it, know him before, but a different realtor sold him a house. Because we have such a strong seller's market, he had to overpay to get it. So this house goes on the market in an area he wants to flip a house. 
A lot of other buyers went over there. It gets multiple offers. He won because he paid $11,000 over the asking price. That's how bad he wanted this house. He didn't do that great of a budget though. So now he owns the house and he's gonna start remodeling it. He went over budget on the kitchen and instead of, gosh, instead of just, the, the hardwood floors were really damaged. There was uh, a lot of cat pee in it stained the floors black in a lot of areas. So he removed the hardwood floors and put in a brand new hardwood floor. The fancy kind that you see in new construction. So this house didn't need that. What he should have done was get his budget more into control and just carpet over those rooms. But I will say when I came in there to list it, it's the nicest remodel I've ever seen in my life. The problem is he overspent. So we over, overspent to buy the house. Now he's gone way over budget. And then he had that same agent listed. It's been on the market for a few months. Uh, at that point, four months on the market. They've had over a hundred showings. They haven't sold it. They have had offers, but the offers are too low. The offers are coming in based on the comps. So he gets rid of that agent after four months because his expenses are just, he's hemorrhaging expenses. Now he's paying a mortgage. Um, so that's eating away at profit. And a lot of his repairs, he's put on a credit card. So now he's paying a monthly credit card bill with enormous interest. So I come on the scene and I explain to him, this is as high as this house can sell, which is way below where it's been listed at. So I show him the comps, he agrees. And, that, and, we, and then we still list it a little bit high. We get some showings, we don't sell it. Two weeks later, I explain, you've got to come down on the price. We are too high. So we come down and then we get an offer. We make the offer work, we go under contract. Then we go through the appraisal. And the appraiser says, I can't find comps. The highest he will go is $8,000 below what we're now selling it for. I can't find the comps either. I've already gone through the comps. The comps don't exist. So my seller had to come down in price to make it work. At that point, I don't know if he broke even. I believe he lost money. He won't tell me for sure, but I think he lost as much as $5,000. Because when you factor in the wasted extra interest on his loan, all the interest on the credit card, and then just overspending in general. He should not have done it. This was a loss of probably about $5,000 is what he owed for this experiment on flipping this one house. So these are the two things you've got to be so careful of. But if you do this right, you can make a fortune. You can make thousands of dollars per house you're flipping. Here's what I wanna share with you going forward. Right now, it's August of 2020, I am, I've been a realtor for a long time. I've sold hundreds of houses. I know what I'm doing in real estate, but I'm brand new at the YouTube channel. So if you like this video, please click subscribe. I don't have hardly any subscribers yet. My channel's only a month old. Here's what going forward, if you are looking to invest, either you want to flip houses or you want to buy rentals. There are not very many good deals right now. We have a strong seller's market. That means there's very few listings and the sellers control the market. That means houses are selling fast. They're selling for higher than asking price. It is the best time ever to sell a house, but not to buy one, especially if you're looking to get in a deal. However, the market's about to change. Coronavirus has put millions of people out of work for a while. A lot of these people won't be getting their jobs back. They're, they're just, not going to. In the meantime, the government has been so good to not allow foreclosures, not allow evictions, but the time will come. The government will have to ease off of that and allow that to take place. That means now the government's stalling for time, hoping the economy gets right back where it was and people get back to work and people get caught up on their mortgage payments. But if they don't, banks will have to either short sale their houses or foreclose. That's gonna create opportunities for you as an investor. 
There will be more houses on the market. We won't have such a strong seller's market. It might be more of a balanced market or it could swing to a buyer's market. When that happens, probably in 2021, in a few months, uh, there's gonna be opportunities to possibly buy duplexes. You could flip individual houses. There's all kinds of investment opportunities. So get your loan ready, get your financing ready, get with a lender, maybe two different lenders, figure out how are you going to buy houses to start flipping. You can either take out a loan on that house or you can get a line of credit on your existing house. There's all kinds of options. You can get investors, you can borrow money from parents. You have a lot of options, but the time is coming soon when there's gonna be opportunities to invest in real estate. So get yourself ready. Thanks for watching.